All right, now when we think about premium ultra books in the market, it's not always over the one lakh segment. There are plenty of good ultra book options out there in the market that are priced around 80, 85,000 and they're pretty good. But usually the brands that come to your mind are probably Dell, Asus with their Zenbook lineup, or for some people it might even be a MacBook. But then Samsung isn't a name that has popped up in India quite a lot, especially in the laptop scene, which might be a disappointment because this one right here deserves your attention. This right here is the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. And I'm not gonna say it's a perfect laptop, but it definitely deserves your attention. And if you're someone who's okay with experimenting new things and does not want to go with the mainstream or the established brands in the laptop scene, this is something that you should definitely check out. Why do I say that? Well, this is one from GTR and you're watching my in-depth review of the Samsung Galaxy Book 2. Let's get started. All right, so let's start off by talking about the design here. Now, the Galaxy Book 2 is quite wide, but not that thick or heavy. It's quite portable and easily fits in tight spaces, such as laptop sleeves too. Even with a backpack, you can just pack it up and trust me, you won't feel the weight of it. Now, considering the fact that it's made of aluminum, the laptop has a sturdy and durable build. In fact, it's one of the few 15.6 inch screen laptops that does not feel like a piece of brick or a heavy object. It genuinely feels premium in hand and is a stunning device in terms of simplicity and style. As for branding, you get a simple Samsung logo at the back, along with a small logo below the display. Now, once you open the lid up, well, the design here looks quite resembling to some of the laptops that we've seen popped up recently, such as the Xiaomi Notebook Ultra. And that is not a bad thing. The Xiaomi Notebook Ultra in itself had a nice design and Samsung just feels, well, that design, but a lot more refined. Moving on to I.O., it comes with a USB Type-C port followed by a USB Type-A 3.2 port, then an HDMI port and another Type-C port on the left side. Over to the right side, you get a micro SD card slot, a 3.5 headphone jack, a USB Type-A 3.2 port and a Kensington security lock. Now, in terms of security, you also get a fingerprint reader on power button, which in my testing worked out very well. So yeah, all in all, the Galaxy Book 2 has a minimalistic design that looks good feels premium, is built quite sturdy, and pretty much manages to check all the boxes. Moving on, we have the display, which is a 15.6 inch 1080p LED panel clocked at 60 hertz. We also get the anti-glare coating on top, so reflections here are not that big of a deal when working on this outdoors. Now see, here's the thing. The panel in itself, like on paper, sounds good, but it's definitely far from perfect. There are slight disappointments here. For instance, while the color reproduction in itself is decent enough, if you compare it with a lot of other panels out there, it definitely feels a little bit washed out. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad panel, but it's just like, there are certain things you associate with a brand. Samsung is known for creating amazing, stunning displays. And this one just feels a lot more underwhelming would be the word for it, I guess. Because, you know, it, it could have been much more. And see, I, I will still say it's fine for day-to-day -day usage. I mean, if you're watching, uh, if you're just web browsing, or even if you're watching content on this, Netflix, Prime Video, or even YouTube videos for that matter, everything looks decent enough. It's not like you'll be feeling, oh, what a, what a crappy display. No, it's a nice display. It won't leave you disappointed. It'll just give you a feeling of wanting a little bit more out of it. The good part about it is still the fact that even though it comes with bottom firing speakers, the audio output is damn good. Now, I'm not sure if Samsung is using any of those technologies from AKG or not, but what I do know is that the end result is really good and even at max volumes, the audio does not distort. Moving along, let's talk about the keyboard and the touchpad. In a nutshell, they're both good. Uh, the keyboard has a fantastic layout that's very easy to adapt to. And the fact that this is a 15.6 inch uh, chassis, you also get a very good numpad here, which is actually quite big if you compare it with a lot of other laptops as well. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but the keys here are definitely bigger than most of the numpads out there. The keyboard backlighting in itself works very well. And I do admire the fact that Samsung has gone with black keys here. A lot of silver laptops have those silver keys that are just 
a tedious task to use in daylight that is not a problem here when when you want to use it in daylight the contrast works well and at low light the backlighting works very well so no complaints there and the only slight issue well not an issue but a slight feedback from my side for the keyboard would be that while the springy feedback of the keys is fine for most users it just could use a little bit more of like a tactile feedback it just feels a little recessed and i would have liked a more tactile feedback here similarly for the touchpad the area is fine no complaints there the gestures work very well and the palm rejection is also pretty good so no complaints in the touchpad area either all right so let's talk about performance now our unit here comes equipped with the intel core i5 1240p processor coupled with 8 gb of lpddr4x ram for graphics you get the intel xe graphics along with a dedicated unit of intel arc a 350m graphics with 4 gb of vram as for storage you get a 512 gb nvme ssd on board with an extra slot for adding storage later on if you want to now the benchmark figures are on your screen and as you would expect the laptop definitely delivers great performance now this is evident in real world usage as well during normal tasks like when you're juggling between web browsing or working on microsoft office documents or even making thumbnails in photoshop everything works very well and while the 8 gb of ram sounds a little low if you're not actually working with multiple chrome tabs like 20 or 25 chrome tabs everything else is fine obviously for extended usage or for multitasking users 16 gb of ram is still recommended but for most folks if they are not going to be pushing this laptop 8 gb of ram should work fine without any issues now i did mention photoshop right obviously because of the arc graphics the laptop can handle gpu intensive tasks as well and photoshop is one thing that runs flawlessly on this of course it's still a mobile gpu and obviously it's not as advanced as one of your nvidia's or amd gpus so don't expect to go about editing videos on this like premiere or something like that obviously the laptop cannot handle that much of a workload but for basic photo editing needs it's pretty good of course a lot of folks might be interested about gaming as well and uh, once again 60 hertz panel mobile gpu you can't really push this thing a lot but if you're into esports titles like valorant or rocket league or even CS go for that matter those games work pretty fine on this no complaints one thing i would like to highlight is that thanks to the big chassis the heat dissipation on this thing is pretty good in fact even in my benchmarking even during multiple stress testing the laptop never crossed the 92 degree celsius mark which is pretty remarkable because most laptops while you're benchmarking them have easily crossed the 95 96 degree mark within the first 15 minutes while this one stayed under 92 degrees for a good portion of 30 minutes moving along before we talk about the battery just a quick word about the software part of course it comes with windows 11 home which was to be expected uh samsung has also added a plethora of apps on this now some of you might call it bloatware which from the definition yes it's right it's bloatware but a lot of those apps are quite useful for instance my favorite feature here is the fact that if you own a samsung tablet you can just use it as a secondary screen seamlessly without any issues and when i say seamlessly i also mean lag free experience so that in itself is a pretty good thing and of course then you have system monitoring tools and other stuff like that and if you don't fancy them well it's windows thankfully you can uninstall them Lastly, let's talk about the battery life. So the laptop comes with a 54 watt hour battery, which in my testing offered pretty good battery backup. I mean, I'm talking about six to seven hours of battery backup based on medium productivity usage, which is decent enough, especially for the price. But what I like more is the fact that it comes with a 65 watt USB type C charger, which comes inside the package. And honestly, thanks to the fast charging support, this thing works very well. And because it's USB PD, of course, that charger can be used to charge your mobile devices as well. Or you can just use a big beefy 100 watt or 120 watt charger to juice up all of your devices. Of course, there are a couple of personal favorites that I use, the links to which will be down in the description box. Also, a quick word inside the battery segment. Uh, speaking of all the softwares that Samsung includes, one quick feature that Samsung has is that you can limit the charging to just 85%, which is really good if you're someone who's using your laptop primarily as a workstation and you are planning to keep your laptop plugged in all the time. So limiting the battery life or battery capacity to just 85% is basically extending the longevity of the battery and preserving its health. So the big question, is the Samsung Galaxy Book 2 worth it? Well, interesting choice. I would just start by saying it's an interesting choice. 
the laptop starts with a price tag of around 60000 while our variant is priced for about 85000 of course there are different bank offers and stuff like that and you'll get the latest pricing down in the description box but yeah for that price point of course you have multiple options from the likes of asus uh, dell hp and obviously realme and xiaomi as well now i think samsung falls in the same bracket where most laptops like xiaomi and realme also suffer which is that people might have a hard time trusting this brand now, of course samsung is a much better brand overall when it when you compare it with realme or xiaomi but when you talk about the laptop space it kind of falls in the same bracket because samsung cannot really compete with already established brands like dell hp lenovo and acer and asus for that matter now if that thing bothers you sure i can I totally understand if a consumer buys a laptop in india they are going to be using it for an extended period of time at least 5 to 7 years and they want a company that they can rely upon so it makes sense if you want to go with well established brands already with that being said if you are open to experimenting if you are open to getting a great value for money product with a actual established name i mean I understand that Samsung might not be an established name in the laptop space but still it holds more value. I mean if you want to flaunt this thing this still has more appeal as compared to a Xiaomi or a Realme laptop to a normal consumer. And in that aspect I mean it's not like you're just paying for the brand you're actually getting pretty good hardware here as well which basically means that if you can live with the fact that Samsung is currently not established Well, I can wholeheartedly recommend the Galaxy Book 2. It's not perfect. The display could have been better. I personally would have liked a bit more feedback on the on the keyboard. Um, obviously, we're moving to refresh rate, so once again, that's a part for the display. But yeah, on the whole, for the price, I mean, it's really hard to complain or ask for anything more than this. And well, that was it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is Vam from GTR, and I'll see you in the next one.